Sura al hud This is a surah which was revealed in the period of Makkah. It has 10 stanzas, 123 verses, 11th by the order of arrangement and 52nd by the order of revolution. And in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining basically the same topic and it was revealed in the same period as uh, Surah Yunus and the topics are also the same as were of Surah Yunus. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alif Lam Ra. Kitabun Ohkimat Ayatuhu, Summa Fusilat Milatun Hakimin Habir. Alif Lam Ra. This is a book whose verses are perfected and then presented in detail from the one who is wise and acquainted through a messenger saying, do not worship except Allah. Indeed, I am to you from him a warner and a bringer of good tidings and saying, seek forgiveness of your Lord and repent to him and he will let you enjoy a good provision for a specified term and give every doer of favor his favor but if you turn away then indeed i fear for you the punishment of a great day to allah is your return and he is over all things competent so right at the start of the surah in the first four chapters very comprehensively allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the summary of the surah and very comprehensively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given an introduction to the attributes of Allah. He is what? Hakim and Khabir. To the introduction to the book, that is the verses of the book. Introduction, introduction to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as what? Nazirun wa Bashirun. And he has introduced that believing and having faith in all these three will do what? Do Allah ta'budu illallah that do not worship anybody other than Allah and do if you do wrong and if you default do what astaghfiru then seek forgiveness from your rab and when uh, when do we need to do why do we need to do all this inni ahafu alaykum azaba yawmin kabir because i fear for you the punishment of a great day so these four verses remind us all and remind the believers that they have to have faith in Allah, his book, his prophet, and the day of judgment. So this is what, in a very comprehensive manner, is a summary of uh, the message of the surah. Unquestionably, they, the believers, turn away their breasts to hide themselves from him unquestionably, even when they cover themselves in their clothing. Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare, uh, what they declare. Indeed, he is knowing of what within the breasts. And there is no creature on earth, but that upon Allah is its provision. And he knows its place of dwelling and place of storage. All is in a clear register. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days and his throne has been upon water that he might test you as to which of you is the best indeed. But if you say indeed you are resurrected after death, those who disbelieve will surely say this is not but obvious magic. And if we hold back from them the punishment of a limited time, they will surely say what detains it? unquestionably on the day it comes to them it will not be averted from them and they will be enveloped by what they used to ridicule and if we give man a taste of mercy from us and then we withdraw it from him indeed he is despairing and ungrateful but if we give him a taste of favor after hardship has touched him he will surely say bad times have left me indeed he is exultant and boastful Except for those who are patient and do righteous deeds, those will have forgiveness and great reward. Then would you possibly leave out some of what is revealed to you or is in your breast constrained it because they say, 
Why? Why has there not been sent down to him a trier or come with him an angel? But you are only a warner and Allah is disposer of all the things. Or do they say he invented it? Say, then bring 10 surahs like it that have been invented and call upon for assistance whomever you can beside Allah if you should be truthful. So here again, another verse is challenging all the disbelievers to make verses or chapters like Allah. And if they do not respond to you, then know that Quran was revealed with the knowledge of Allah and there is no deity except him. Then would you not be Muslims? Whoever desires the life of this world and its adornments, we fully repay them for their deeds therein and they therein will not be deprived. Those are the ones for whom there is not in the hereafter, but fire. Lost is that what they did therein, and worthless is what they used to do. The deeds which will be, which will be accepted as virtuous deeds on the day of the judgment will be all those deeds will which are done with the intention of hereafter to please Allah, to save ourselves from the displeasure of Allah, to acquire the Jannah and to save ourselves from hellfire. So is the one who stands, who stands upon a clear evidence from his Lord, like the aforementioned and a witness from him follows it and before it, was the scriptures of Musa to lead as a mercy. Those believers in the former revolutions believe in the Quran, but whoever disbelieves in it from the various factions, fire is his promised destination. So be not in doubt about it. Indeed, it is the truth from your Lord, but most of the people do not believe. Rabbana innana amanna faqfir lana zanubana waqina azab nar And who is more unjust than he who invents a lie about Allah? Those will be presented before their Lord and the witnesses will say, these are the ones who lied against their Lord. Unquestionably, the curse of Allah is upon the wrongdoers. Which wrongdoers who averted people from the way of Allah and sought to make it seem deviant while they concerning the hereafter were disbelievers. Those were not causing failure to Allah on earth, nor did they have besides Allah any protector. For them, the punishment will be multiplied. They were not able to hear, nor did they see. Those are the ones who will have lost themselves and lost from them is what they used to invent. Assuredly, it is they in hereafter who will be the greatest of losers. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum, Allahumma ajirna minan nar, rabbibni li'indaka baytan fil jannah. Indeed, they who believed and done the righteous deeds and humbled themselves to their Lord, those are the companions of paradise. They will abide eternally therein. The examples of the two parties is like the blind and the deaf and the seeing and the hearing. Are they equal in comparison? Then will you not remember? And we had certainly sent Nu alayhi salam to his people saying, Indeed, I am to you a clear warner. So now from here onwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be narrating the events in the life of five prophets and their people. I will be in Surah Hud here today. I will be narrating the events in the life of all these five prophets before we will be reading the verses. I will be in detail explaining these events in Surah Hud. And later on in the later chapters, wherever these incidences are going to come, I will be just reading through the verses again. Now I will be explaining the areas, the locality of the people, geographically, their time period, their condition, their blessings, how they transgressed and what punishments they received. And finally, we will be summing up the messages and the morals learned also. And then we will also be carrying on a comparative self-analysis as to what we are doing and what sort of an in, well, what sort of a punishment we are inviting for ourselves also. 
So starting from the verse 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining about Hazrat Nu alayhi salam. He came, he is, his name has been explained in the list of the five strong-willed prophets. The prophets of determination being, the five prophets of determination being Hazrat Nu alayhi salam, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, and last but not the least, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The time period of Hazrat Nu alayhi salam was 5,000 years after Hazrat uh, Adam alayhi salam, his area was the land of Iraq, the land between Euphrates and Tigris. The behavior of the nation was, they, the major sin which they did was polytheism. They started worshiping idols. How did they get up to all this? Because there was no idol worshiping before the people of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. They were the pioneers of this major sin. What happened was that they had found five partners with Allah. The five partners which they had made with Allah, they called them as Wad, Sava, Yeruz, Yeruk, and Nasab. And how did this all happen was, this was all by the crafty tricks of shaitan who had wickedly and slowly led them into all this idol worship what happened was that there were five pious and religious people in their nation and they were pious and they were righteous and they were they were very they were very obedient to allah and they were in fact religious scholars and they were their like religious leaders now, and they were, they were very respected and obeyed also by the people. Now, when they passed away, the followers were very upset. They would sit on the sides of their graves and they would keep on crying and they would, they would be very upset. So we know that depression and anxiety makes a person an easy prey to shaitan. So shaitan started attacking them. And these disappointed people, they were very vulnerable and they were attacked by shaitan. The disappointed, vulnerable followers, he suggested that they were your religious leaders and they were your religious guides. But now after they have departed, you will, you will very soon forget your pious leaders. And soon, very soon, you will even forget their faces. So you know what you need to do is that you need to make small statues of them and place them on their graves so that every time you visit their graves, you look at their statues and they will remind you about your religious leaders and keep them in your memory and your memory, they will be fresh. So this is how he got them into making the statues of all those five pious religious leaders. Now, after accomplishing this task, Shaitan moved ahead and then he suggested to all these men that you men folk, you come to the graves and you visit the graves and you see the statues and you refresh your memories about all the five people. But you know what? Your wives and the rest of your family members who do not visit the graves, they are still deprived. So what you should do is that you should make statues and you should place them in your homes so that everyone in your family has a look at them, remembers them. Just stop, just stop and think. Did the people need to remember the faces of the five biased people? Did they just remember to need to remember the faces or actually did they need to remember the teachings of piety, the teachings of fear of hereafter, the teachings of obedience of Allah? But this is shaitan, and this is his tricks. He always misguides people from the truth to the falsehood, from righteousness to transgression, from doers of good to major sins, to, from obedience to disobedience. So this is the result of all those who obey and follow shaitan. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has announced in Surah Yaseen, so this is how shaitan called the whole nation, whole nation in polytheism. 
as they started to worship the five statues, supplicating to them also. So their major sin was the worshiping of idol and finding partners with Allah. Moreover, they, their rulers and their leaders were disobedient. They were transgressors, they were polytheists, and they were oppressors also. And there was a lack of justice in the state, but the people, they had they were fine and they had accepted the power and the rule of such rulers and they were content with all this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam towards his nation, choose him for, choosing him for prophethood and he then started warning them against the result of all their uh, wrongdoings and their worshipping of idols and told them that there's no deity but Allah and ordered them to refrain, refrain from worshiping idol and all forms of polytheism he negated. But the people, they were, they were obstinate and they were stubborn and they refused to obey him and they refused to follow him. Like in Surah, Surah Nu, verse 22, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Makaru wa makaran qubbara, that they had, they had woven a net of crafty wickedness around. And then Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam invited them towards the right path. As he said, I have invited them to the truth day and night, and they refused to believe. Finally, he was disappointed and he asked and he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as um, said in the verse of uh, Surah Al Qamar, verse 10 of Surah Al Qamar, Rabbi ni maqlubun fantasir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I've been overpowered. Help me. And then in Surah Nu, verse number 20, he also supplicated, Rabbi la tazar ala al-arzi min al-kafirina tayyara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave not even a single house of all these disbelievers and idol worshippers on the earth. And the supplication was heard and it was granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Hazrat Nu alayhi salam to make a ship. And uh, we need to remember that the craft and the skill of making a ship was not known to people prior to this. It was through his revelations to Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam that humanity was told how to make boats and ships. And Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam was ordered that he starts making a ship, al wahun dusur, with wooden planks and with nails as per the guidance and instructions from Allah, as Allah said, be ayunina, under the supervision and in sight of his master, Al-Alim. And uh, people used to pass by Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. He was busy making the ship and they used to make fun of him. But he used to keep on continuing silently as it is the trait of the believers. What? What? that they just do not worry about anybody who is making, who is mocking them or who is making fun of them. And the ship, what was it like and how huge it was? It had three decks or three floors and the length of the ship was 300 feet and the height and the width, width was almost 30 feet. There were windows, there were ventilators in all the decks. And when finally the ship was ready by the order of Allah, it started raining. It started raining heavily as if, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, munhamir, as if taps had been opened up from the sky. And then Allah said, wafarat, wafarat the nur, that the land split and the fountain started bubbling out from all the ovens and water started flowing profusely and the water level started rising as a flood on the land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam to uh, climb the ship along with all his believer partners, which were till now companions were 40 companions. And Allah also ordered him to take two pairs of all the species of animals and birds with him also. And then the ship, ship it started sailing. And we learned from the traditions that it started sailing on the 10th of Rajab and ended on the 10th of Muharram. So full 150 days, full 150 days were the companions and Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, they were on the ship. And when the water was flooding his waves, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, he saw his son, he saw his son. Till now he was a disbeliever and he had not accepted Islam and he was disobedient. And he saw and he looked at his son, he asked him, 
to accept Islam and to seek forgiveness, but the son was again stubborn and he was obstinate and he was arrogant. And he said that he will be clever enough to climb the mountain and save himself. But Hazrat Anu salam told him clearly and he announced that nobody will be saved until whom Allah will save. But then there was a, there was a huge tide which came and the son was drowned. In An, the son of Hazrat, Hazrat uh, Nuh alayhi salam was drowned very much in front of his eyes. Now, all the things perished on the earth by the order of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the earth, Ya Arzu Abli'i, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the earth to swallow on the water. And Allah asked the sky to stop raining. And then the water came down and the ship landed as <coughs> the ship landed as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the verses on the Judi Mount. And then the city of uh, Qariya Qarudi, it was set up and the market was Suke Samanin was established. There were 80 families and Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam then started preaching them again. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam preached for a total period of 950 years, 650 years before the flood and 300 years after the flood. The Mount Judi is between Armenia and Kurdistan in the, mounts of, uh, in the mountains of Aedes. And um, even today, we, uh, we hear that planes which are flying over the mountains, mountain range of Andes, they report seeing a huge wooden structure over the mountains. And in Bukhari also, it has been reported in Ibn Abi Hatim and Qitada that when Iraq was conquered, they saw people with pieces of wood. They used to claim that it was from the ship of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. And even today, travelers to the foothills of Andes, they come across people selling um, such wooden pieces also. Now, in the end, what morals and what messages the, does the whole story teach us is the punishment of worshiping idols and the punishment of polytheism. A society indulging in idol worship, a society indulging in polytheism was drowned, was terminated. Those not responding to the call and invitation of people, uh, of the prophets, they were tormented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third message, the result of obstinacy and stubbornness is being highlighted by the story. Fourth, people accepting accepting and staying to transgression and accepting the transgressor, the transgressors and disobedient rulers as their leaders, they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. And if we critically analyze, now getting all these messages, if we critically analyze, we will realize that although, although the people of our localities, they are not worshipping idols, but polytheism in various forms is deep-rooted in the society. And whenever attempts are made to stop and people explain how we need to stop and just leave and get rid of all these polytheism and all these customs, then obstinately and stubbornly people carry on on all these customs saying that it is the custom of our family, it is a manner of our ancestors, and we succumb to it despite listening to Quran and Hadith. So we, we do need to realize that we suffer from calamities of wood, of all forms of floods. Every year, every year or every second year, we are suffering from the calamities of floods. The flood victims of the previous floods, they have not been rehabilitated and we get the disaster of the flood next year again. Moreover, I will also see and I will also mention that societies, all the Muslim societies, they are, they are flooding with the evils of vulgarity and immorality and drinking and gambling and adultery and usury and unlawful earnings and bribe and looting and murdering. We are flooded with all these evils. Why is it so? This is because of our behaviors of disobedience. This is 
because of our manners of transgression, of accepting the transgressors and disobedience as our rulers, and because of the polytheistic customs which are prevailing in the society. Allahumma gfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Verse 26, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam said that you not worship except Allah. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. So the imminent among those who disbelieved from his people said, we do not see you but as a man like ourselves, and we do not see you followed except by those who are the lowest of us and at first suggestion. And we do not see in you over us any merit, rather we think you are liars. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the prophets we learn that they were sent to specific nation, to a specific geographical area. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sent where, as Allah says in Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He was sent as a mercy to the whole worlds. As Prophet Sallallahu himself, he said, he said that previous prophets were sent to a nation for a time. I have been sent to all the humanity of all the ages. The prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu was not only for the people of Mecca and Medina, but was internationally for the people of America, Australia, Antarctica, Asia, not only for the time of the people of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but for people till the day of judgment. And in this verse number 26, this was the teaching of all the prophets was the teaching of oneness of Allah. And now in verse 27, we realize that who opposed Hazrat Nu was the imminent among the disbelievers. Remember, it is a fact it is a fact that all the prophets had to face the greatest opposition from the leaders and from the upper class of the society, always. The upper class of the society always rejected the invitation of prophets and always resisted the impl implementation of Islam. Because the very obvious reasons, for very obvious reasons, because the implementation of Quran and the laws and system of Quran, justice and equality would prevail. And so the upper class would have to give, give up and sacrifice their authorities and powers and their wealth and their riches. So the implementation of Quran and Islam would be a loss for the upper class and the elite of the society. But in all these times with the implementation of Quran, what happened with the teachings of Islam, with the messages of the prophets, what happened was that the lower classes, the lower classes, the deprived, the have-nots of the society, they readily converted, they readily accepted, and they readily supported the implementation of Islam. Again, because of obvious reasons, because the implementation of Islam, they would be given equality and their rights would be restored. Their statuses in the society would be elevated in the light of the teachings of the Quran. No white over the black, no Arab over the non-Arab has any superiority. So they would readily embrace Islam and they would readily help and support the implementation of Islam. This was so with all the prophets and even with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also. But here I would want to highlight that for an Islamic revolution to come, only the support of the lower class and the have-nots and the underprivileged people of the society will not be able to bring that big revolution of Islam. The support of the upper class, the support of the intelligentsia, and the elite is inevitable for the Islamic implementation and the Islamic revolution. But to convince, to motivate the upper class will be possible only and only if the task of teaching and preaching of Quran and Hadith is taken up 
by the individuals from this class itself. The task of teaching and preaching of Quran is taken up by the individuals from the upper class, from the elite of the society itself. Because we know that the obstinate and the arrogant class of the society will not be prepared to listen or to accept from the individuals of the lower socioeconomic status. Instead, when an educated person from the intelligentsia of the society, while versed with religious education also, having high qualification in the worldly education, will teach them about the message of Islam in a much more confident and eloquent and impressive manner, then only will they listen, then only will they respond. So this is needed. So this is needed. What? That some of the highly educated individuals of the Muslim society give sacrifice, sacrifices of their professional statuses, of their worldly gains for the cause of Dawah of Islam. Maybe some of us, maybe some of our children, highly qualified degrees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, choose us all, guide us all and accept us all for the purpose of Dawa. He said, O oh people, O oh my people, have you considered if I should be upon a clear evidence from my Lord why he has given me mercy from himself, but it has been made unapparent to you, should we force it upon you while you are averse to it? And O oh my people, I ask not of you for it any wealth. My reward is not but from Allah, and I am not not one to drive away those who have believed. Indeed, they will meet, your, meet their Lord, but I see that you are people behaving ignorantly. I know my people who would protect me from Allah if I drove them away, drove whom away? The lower class, the have-nots, underprivileged people of the society who were coming towards Hazrat Nuh Then will you not be reminded and do I not tell you that I have, I have the depositories containing the provisions of Allah or that I know the unseen, nor do I tell you that I am an angel, nor do I say of those upon whom your eyes look down that Allah will never grant them any good. Allah is most knowing of what is within their souls. Indeed, I would then be among the wrongdoers. They said, oh no, you have disputed between us, being frequent in dispute of us. So bring us what you threaten us if you should be of the truthful. He said, Allah will only bring to you if he wills and you will not cause him failure. And my advice will not benefit you, although I wish to advise you, if Allah should intend to put you in error, he is your Lord and to him you will be returned. Or do they say he invented it? Say, if you have invented it, then upon me is the consequence of my crime. But I am innocent of what crimes you commit. And it, it was revealed to Nu alayhi salam that no one will believe from his people except those who have already believed. So do not be distressed by what they have been doing and construct the ship under our observation and our inspiration and do not address me concerning those who have wronged. Indeed, they are to be drowned, who the son of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Kin'an. And he constructed the ship and whenever an assembly of eminent of these people passed by him, they ridiculed him. He said, if you ridicule us, then we will ridicule you just as you ridicule when on the day of judgment. And you are going to know who will get the punishment that will disgrace him on the earth and whom upon whom will descend an enduring punishment in hereafter. So it was until when our command came and oven overflowed, we said, load upon the ship of each creature, two mates and your family, except those about whom the word has proceeded and include whoever has believed. How many companions accompanied him? 
40, but none had believed with him except a few. And Nuh salam said, embark therein in the name of Allah is his course and its anchorage. Indeed, my, la my Lord is forgiving and merciful. And it sailed with them through waves like mountains. And Nuh salam called to his son who was apart from them. Oh, my son, come aboard with us and be not, not with the disbelievers. But he said in arrogance, I will take refuge on a mountain to protect me from the water. Nuh salam said, there is no protector today from the decree of Allah, except for whom he gives mercy and the waves came between them and he was among the drowned and it was said o earth swallow your water and o sky withhold your rain and the water subsided and the matter was accomplished and the ship came to rest on the mountain of judy and it was said away with the wrongdoing people and Nuh alayhi salam called to his Lord and said, my Lord, indeed, my son is of my family. Indeed, your promise is true. You are the most just of judges. He said, oh, no, indeed, he is not of your family. Indeed, he is one whose work was other than than righteous so ask me not of that about which you have no knowledge indeed i advise you lest you be among the ignorant nu al islam said my lord a'uzu billahi an aquna min al jahilin my lord i seek refuge in you from asking that of which i have no knowledge and unless you forgive me and have mercy upon me i will be among the losers it was said O oh, no, this embark in security from us and blessings upon you and upon nations descending from those with you, but other nations of them, we will grant enjoyment and then they will touch them from us a painful punishment. That is, from the news of the unseen which we have revealed to you, you knew it not, neither you nor your people before this, so be patient. Indeed, the best outcome is for the, for the righteous. Verse number 50. And to add, uh, to add, we sent his brother, Hud alayhi salam. He said, O oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. You are not but inventors of falsehood. So from here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained the story of Hazrat Hud alayhi salam. He was the prophet who came after Hazrat Nu alayhi salam. And Allah has mentioned about him many times in Quran. The nation of Hazrat Hud alayhi salam, they were called as the people of Ad. And the Arabs, they knew the nation of Ad very well. In Arabic, old and Asian things are called as Adiyat, with reference to Ad. The area of the people of Ad has been known as Rubu'ul Khali, that is the empty square. It is what? It is a square piece of totally empty, barren, uninhabited land. And the area geographically was where between on the northeast of the area is the Persian Gulf, on the southwest is the Red Sea, and on the southern edge is the land of Oman, Hazremot, Aden, and Yemen. And the area between this between Hejaz, Yemen, Yamama was the area of, uh, of uh, the people of Ad. And uh, we learn from books that in 1837, James Wellstead, he was a sailor. He went to this area and he discovered a plate with the name of Hazrat Hud alayhi salam. And in Hazre Mot, there is, by the people of uh, the locality, there is, uh, they celebrate the yearly anniversary of Prophet Hud alayhi salam is celebrated on the 15th of Shaban. So this is precisely the area. Now, the people of Ad, they were a blessed nation. As Allah says in Surah Araf, verse 69, Wasqur is ja'alakum qulafa amin ba'di qawminu. They were the descendants of Hazrat Nu alayhi salam. They were blessed physically, 
They were tall, statured, they were broad, well-built, fair, very good-looking and handsome people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Araf, verse 69, And uh, they were so tall that when after death, they were lying on the ground, their dead bodies, as Allah says, they seemed like they were uprooted date palm trees. In Surah Qamr, verse number 19 and 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ka'annahum i'jazun nakhlum musta'ir. They were like uprooted stem of palm trees. And not only physically, they were blessed socially and economically also. They were highly well-developed and they had a very uh, well-developed architecture and they were very prosperous. They constructed huge palaces with pillars as is mentioned in surah al-qamar verse number six and seven allah says iramazatil imad they constructed huge palaces with pillars and they were like what in surah qamar verse number eight allah says allati lam yukhluku misluha fil bilad no one else in the period in the periods after that in cities constructed what they constructed but despite all these blessings, the behavior of the people of the nation of Ad was, <clears throat> the people of Ad was that despite being blessed with all their physical and social and economic condition, they were ungrateful to their sustainer. They were ungrateful and disobedient to their master. The disobedience and the sin of the people of Ad basically was that they were disobedient to Allah and they were disobedient to his prophet. They, they just refused to believe and obey the teachings of Allah and prophet. And then they were also finding partners with Allah. Like the people of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, they were also indulging in worshiping idol and they were also indulging in polytheisms of all forms. And uh, their rulers, again, were arrogant and they were disobedient. The rulers, they had built huge palaces for themselves, but they would not let the public and they would not let the lower class of the people even close to their palaces. So there was no equality, there was no justice. And injustice was prevailing. But despite all this state of affairs, the common masses, they were content. They were content with the control of such tyrant and transgressors and unjust rulers. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showered all forms of blessings on them, they, instead of implementing the messages and the commandments of Allah, on the land of Allah and the Islamic code of life on the land of Allah and establishing the teachings of the Lord on the land of the Lord, they preferred the worldly systems of life instead. So this was all their, or their uh, uh, major sins which they were actually indulging in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophet Hud towards them and uh, he invited them for what was truth and asked them to refrain from all their disobediences and transgressions, but they obstinately just refused everything. And how were then they punished? For first three years by the order of Allah, all forms of rain stopped. There was total drought and uh, famine struck them. And this was like a smaller punishment by Allah. And the purpose, as Allah explains, that when Allah strikes a nation with smaller punishment, the purpose is so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala struck them with this famine because Allah wanted that they should humble down and they should bow down and they should, what they were with full arrogance, they were being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with full obstinacy and stubbornness, they were transgressing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This famine was sent so that they bow down, they humble down, they surrender and submit and they seek forgiveness and they revert towards the obedience of Allah. But they still 
were continued arrogantly and uh, they continued with full obstinacy and they did not seek forgiveness and there was no there was no behavior of yatazaraun so then they were sent the big torment they were sent with destructive winds with hurricanes or tornadoes which destroyed everything like Allah says in Surah Hamim Masjidah, verse number 16, فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا سُوَرُسَرًا فِي أَيَّامٍ نَحِسَاتٍ لَنُزِيقَنَّهُمْ أَزَابُ الْخِزِي فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The storm, it started on Wednesday and continued for seven days and eight nights continuously. All the palaces they were demolished and all the people they died and the locality perished, no signs of any locality, any buildings, any people, any palaces, no community left whatsoever. And even till now, the tormented land stays and exists as a square piece of land, which is totally uninhabited and it is totally barren and it is totally infertile. There is no sign of life in this square piece of land whatsoever. No birds nest here. There are no trees. There is no plantation, not even a blade of grass. If you just look around, there are white patches of salt. There are white patches of salt on the land all around. They can be seen scattered. And if a thing is thrown on the land here, an object is thrown, then the salt consumes it immediately and converts it into a white powder. What lessons and what morals do we learn? That when a nation indulges in polytheism, this is the end. This is the punishment. A big eye opener for all indulging and insisting in polytheistic customs. The second message is the result of arrogance, of obstinacy, stubbornness, and obstinately and stubbornly sticking on to disobedience and transgression. This is clear. The third message, those who are not grateful to the Lord are deprived of the success of hereafter. As Allah says, وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونِي And as Allah promises, لَا شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَا إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ أَزَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ All those who are ungrateful, the, the punishment of Allah is severe and intense. Then we learn that a nation blessed by the Lord, but failing to implement the system of the Lord, the supremacy of the Lord on the land, invites the wrath of Allah. Then we learn that a nation failing to seek forgiveness, failing to ask for forgiveness and failing to repent when a calamity befalls, ends up in a greater disaster. Allahumma gfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. So now let's go through the verses. Hazrat Hud said, Oh my people, I do not ask you for it any reward. My reward is only from the one who has created me. Then will you not reason? And oh my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to him. He will send rain from the sky upon you in showers and increase you in strength, add it to your strength and do not turn away being criminals. They said, oh who you have not brought to us clear evidence and we are not the ones to leave our gods on your say so, nor are we believers in you. <clears throat> We only say that some of our gods have possessed you with evil. He said, indeed, I call Allah to witness and witness yourselves that I am free from whatever you associate with Allah other than him. So plot against me altogether, then do not give me respite. Indeed, I have relied upon Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. There is no creature but that he holds its forelock. Indeed, my Lord is on a path that is straight. But if they turn away, say, I have already conveyed that with which I was sent to you. My Lord will give succession to a people other than you, and you will not harm him at all. Indeed, my Lord is over all things guardian. 
And when our command came, we saved Hood and those who believed with him by mercy from us, and we saved them from a harsh punishment. And that was Ad, who rejected the signs of their Lord and disobeyed his messengers and followed the orders of every obstinate tyrant. And they were therefore followed in this world with a curse and as well on the day of resurrection, unquestionably Ad denied their Lord, then away with Ad, the people of Hud. Verse 61, and to Samud, we sent their brother, Swaleh. So now from here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining from verse 61 onwards, Allah is going to explain the narration of the events in the life of Hazrat Swaleh alayhi salam. The people of Samud and the prophet's name was Hazrat Swaleh alayhi salam. The time period they were the descendants of the period of Ad, and they have also been called as Adesanya, that is the second Ad. The area of the people of Samud has been explained as the northwest of the Arab Peninsula. Even today, it is known as the area of Hijr, and between Medina and Tabuk, there's a railway station which is called as Madaine Swale. This was the capital city of the people of Samud. And there are still remnants of their magnificent buildings and palaces which they built. When Prophet was coming back after the Tabuk expedition on his way, he came across these remnants and he also indicated the well and uh, the companions used the water from the well to knead their dough. But Prophet stopped them from using it and then they gave it and fed it to their camels. The condition of the people of the Samud was that they were also like the people of Ad, they were a blessed nation and they were very modern and they were very prosperous and well-developed. They had an advanced architecture. They carved out of the, magn they carved magnificent palaces out of the mountainous rocks. And imagine in that period, in that period without the dynamite and without the explosives we have today, they, they created remarkable feats of architecture. And uh, as Allah mentions in Surah Araf, verse number 74, وَاسْقُرُوا وَجَعَ لَكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ مِنْ بَعْدِ آد. They were what? They were the descendants of Ad. وَبَوَّعَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْزِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them place in the earth. تَتَّخِزُونَ مِنْ سُحُولِهَا قُصُورًا They were making in the, big, in, the, in the softer parts of the earth, they were making huge palaces. وَتَنْخِطُونَ الْجِبَالَ بُيُوتًا And out of the out of the rocks of the mountains, they were carving what huge, magnificent palaces. Moreover, they were they were they were blessed with all forms of worldly affluence. Also, now in response to all the uh, the blessings they were they were blessed with, how did they behave? They were also indulging in finding partners with Allah and all forms of polytheisms and worshiping idols. They were disobedient, they were transgressors, and um, their rulers were also uh, uh, disobedient and transgressors. The ruler of the people of Samud was Doban bin Nami, and he was by an illegitimate by birth, and he was habitual to drinking and adultery, and the people, people were fine with his immoral immoral rulers they were like a person who was uh, who was a drunk who was an adulterer they did not find any issue keeping them as his as their ruler and when Hazrat samud uh, has a uh, uh, invited them towards belief and towards faith they instead of believing and following they insisted in demanding the prophet to show them a miracle so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a miracle and what happened was that the mountain erupted and a huge full term she camel emerged and then it gave birth to a baby camel and uh, seeing this miracle we learned that only 
120 companions believed Hazrat Swali alayhi salam. This was a miracle. The camel, the she camel and the baby was a miracle. So then after showing them this miracle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the people that now, now that you've received the miracle you asked for, now you will be duty bound. They were ordered that they will not touch the camel or the baby with any form of evil intention. And they were ordered that they were to let the mother and the baby move about and to graze about freely wherever they both desired. And uh, regarding the drinking of the water from the well, one day was specified for the camel and the baby. And the second day was for the animals of the rest of the community. So this turned out to be an issue for the affluent people of the society who had animals, who had animals who had to stay out of water for on the alternate days and whose fields and whose crops the she camel would go about spoiling and crushing and grazing. We need to remember that the limits and the don'ts of Allah always are difficult for the upper class to accept. So what happened was that the, one of the richest, one of the richest persons of the society who was whom? Qadar bin Salif. He had the greatest numbers of animals and camels who were disturbed by the, by the liberty ordered for the, for the miracle camel. So he decided to transgress the limits set by Allah. Qadar bin Salif, the wealthiest person of Samud, he was tall, he was fair, blue-eyed, handsome, and at the same time, extremely corrupt and immoral also. He was an adulterer also. Like the rulers, he was an, he was an adulterer also. He and his friend. His friend Mista and he, they had two girlfriends, Tebal and Qatam. And both Mista and Qadar, they both decided to kill the miracle camel. And they waited on the well for the she camel to come for water. And since she, the camel was too tall and they just could not get to the throat to cut the throat. So it was like impossible to reach the throat. So they cut the hamstrings. They cut the hamstrings uh, for the reason that, that if it would fall, then they would slaughter it. But the moment they cut the hang streams, the camel screamed and it miraculously disappeared. The people came running to Hazrat Swali salam and informed them how the miracle camel had disappeared. Prophet uh, Swali salam told them to go and to protect the baby now. And they ran towards the baby, but the baby also screamed and it disappeared. Miraculously appeared both the mother and the baby, and they disappeared in the same miraculous manner also. Then they came to the prophet again, and then the prophet told them that they need to wait for three days. The first day, their faces will turn yellow. The second, they will turn red. And on the third, they will turn black. And then the torment of Allah will fall on them. So the torment came like what? There were earthquakes, Rajfatun has been mentioned. And it's been explained in traditions that there were like 2,500 earthquakes which struck them. And uh, then the torments of smoke, there was a torment of a smoke cloud because after the earthquake, the volcanoes, they erupted and there was, they threw out the black smoke and the smoke was intensely poisonous and all the people, they were suffocated to death. So the torments was swai hatun, the torment of scream. The people were screaming to death when they were suffocated. And then there was the sai katun, the thunder might've been the explosion of the volcano. And then there was the twaria, which was again the loud, loud, loud thunder. And then there was the rajwa, which was what? Which was the earthquake itself. These torments, they kill all the people, but the prophet and the 120 companions by the order of Allah, they had emigrated before the torment of Allah fell on the nation. And the lessons and the morals now in the end, the result and the punishment of the disobedient transgressors 
quality is, is again being highlighted here. The punishment of the transgressing and the crossing of the limits of Allah. When a nation crosses the limits of Allah, when the limit, when the nation starts committing the don'ts of Allah, then how seriously and strictly they will be punished is being highlighted. Failure to believe despite seeing the miracles of Allah has been highlighted. And the end result of immorality and adultery is also being shown clearly in the verses. So now going through the verses, they said, O Swale, you are among us, a man, a man of promise before this. Do you forbid us to worship what our fathers worshipped? And indeed, we are about that to which you invite us in disquieting doubt. He said, O my people, have you considered if I should be upon a clear evidence from my Lord, and he has given me mercy from himself, who would protect me from Allah if I disobeyed him? So you would not increase me except in loss. And O oh, my people, this is the she camel of Allah. She is to you a sign. So let her feed upon Allah's earth and do not touch her with harm. Or oh, you will be taken by an impending punishment. But they hamstrung her. So he said, enjoy yourselves in your homes for three days. That is, that is a promise not to be denied. <coughs> so when our command came, we saved Swale and those who believed with him by mercy from us and saved them from the disgrace of that day. Indeed, it is your Lord, who is the powerful and exalted in might, uh, in might, and the shriek seized those who had wronged, and they became within their home corpuses fallen prone. Why? Because they were suffocated because of the poisonous uh, smoke, as if they had never prospered therein. Unquestionably, Samud denied their Lord. Then away with Samud. Worse. 69 to 76, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is now giving a brief story and mentioning about some events in the life of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And certainly did our messengers come to Ibrahim alayhi salam with good tidings. They said, peace be upon you, salamun alaykum. He said, salamun alaykum, and did not delay in bringing them a roasted calf. Here, rusuluna means what? The messengers mean what? The angels. And bushra, the good tidings was what? Was the good news was that Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was now 100 years old, and his wife, who was infertile, and he had prayed, Rabbi Habli Swalehan. So the good news of the son was being given. Remember to recite Quranic and the, uh, the supplications of the prophets. Because why? Because these were the supplications which were accepted, which were answered. And when we will be reciting these supplications, we will get the reward of recitation of Quran and following the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And moreover, they will teach us how to supplicate. And this is a brief supplication for all those who want to ask for uh, children for themselves or to pray for grandchildren or to ask for righteous spouse for their children or who want to ask for the piety and righteousness of their children. Hazrat Ibrahim had said, Rabbi Habli Swalehan. So we need to remember this uh, supplication, make it very frequently. And they said, Salama. So Salam at meeting was not only a greeting taught to Prophet Sallallahu and his followers, but it was also for the previous followers. And uh, what did Hazrat Ibrahim salam, do when the angels arrived? The angels, we know that they had come in human form and they had come as totally strange travelers. They were total strangers. They were some travelers who had stopped by Hazrat Ibrahim's house and how did he, how did he entertain them? 
and what his hospita hospitality to total strangers, to total travelers who might never, never, ever come across again in his life. There was no obligation, no love lost. But look at the hospitality. And hospitality in those days, slaughtering a lamb and then cooking without the cooking aids of today. Prophet Wasallam said that anyone who believes in Allah and the day of judgment should be hospitable to his guests. Remember, hospitality was a sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the previous prophets also. When he saw their hands not reaching for it, he distrusted them and felt from them apprehension. They said, fear not, we have been sent to the people of Lut. And his wife was standing and she smiled. Then we gave her good tidings of Ishaq and after Ishaq, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, she said, woe to me, shall I give birth while I am an old woman? And this, my husband is an old man. Indeed, this is an amazing thing. They said, are you amazed at the decree of Allah? May the mercy of Allah and his blessings be upon you, people of the house. Indeed, he is praiseworthy and honorable. And when the fright had left Ibrahim and the good tidings had reached him, he began to argue with us concerning the people of Lut. Indeed, Ibrahim salam, was forbearing, grieving, and frequently returning to Allah. The angel said, O oh, Ibrahim, give up this plea. Indeed, the command of your Lord has come because he was doing what? He was pleading to save the people of Lut. Indeed, the command of your Lord has come and indeed there will reach them a punishment that cannot be repelled. And when our messengers, the angels came to Lut, he was anguished for them and felt for them great discomfort and said, that this is a trying day. So now from here onwards, a few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to explain the story of Hazrat Lut alayhi salam and his people. Hazrat Lut alayhi salam was related to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam's brother, Haran, he had a son, Hazrat Lut alayhi salam, and Hazrat Ibrahim's paternal uncle, also named Haran, his sister, Sarah. These were the only two. Lut alayhi salam, who was the nephew of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Hazrat Sarah, who was the paternal cousin of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, these were the only two who had believed in Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And hence, believing they had emigrated from Iraq to Palestine with him. So Hazrat Lut alayhi salam, who was the nephew, had emigrated with him to Palestine. He stayed with Ibrahim alayhi salam for quite some time. He was there learning the teachings of Islam and also was receiving training from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And when he had learned the teachings of Islam and when he had been trained and when he had been, uh, when by the will of Allah, he had been, uh, he had come up to the level, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him for his prophethood. And then he was sent to the people of the nation of Lut. The nation have, has not been called by, by any other name. They've just been called by the people of Lut. The area of the people is what is today called as the area of France, Jordan. And it is located between Iraq and Palestine. The capital city was called Sudum. And Sudum, which is an area very close to the Dead Sea today. And there were four other cities other than Sudum, and their land was full. How were they blessed? Their lands were full of orchards and fully cultivated fertile lands. They had latest architecture and they had a densely populated cities. But today there is no sign of the nation and there's no sign of all these densely populated well-developed, architecturally, latestly designed and constructed cities, except the Dead Sea. And uh, we know that when, <coughs> when we travel from Hejaz to Syria, 
the redundant area comes on the way. And the behavior of the people, despite being privileged and despite being blessed, very much like the people of uh, the um, Ad and the people of Samud, they failed to believe. They failed to believe arrogantly, stubbornly, obstinately, sticking to disobedience and transgression and polytheism. But the basic major sin they committed was homosexuality, for which for which they turned out to be pioneers, because before them, this major sin was not committed by any person on the land. So they were the pioneers of homosexuality. How did they come up to all this? Because they were an affluent society. And because of their affluence, rather than being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings of affluence and wealth, they turned even more obedient. And Rather than bowing down before the Lord, they were arrogant and they continued in disobedience and they developed the love of worldly riches. They love, they developed the love of worldly riches, as Allah says, al-mala, hubban jamma. This lust and this desire of wealth become the cause of all the evil deeds and all the evil sayings. And what did they? end up with when they developed this lust and this love of money and they also lost haya and they lost haya and they lost their modesty and they became an easy prey for shaitan who suggested them an easy alternative for nikah and the shaitan they got on the track of shaitan they thought as shaitan has suggested that for the fulfillment of their sexual desires, physical sexual desires, you, you marry women. But when you marry women and you have physical relationships, then they bear children and you end up with economic and physical and social and psychological commitments and burdens and responsibilities and commitments of maintaining a complete family. So the shaitan suggested that it would be a far better option if they could, instead of marrying women and having physical relationship with women and ending up with all the family commitments, it would be much better option if they could satisfy themselves by having physical relationship with, with males. And so there would be no rearing and there would be no caring and no commitments and no responsibilities. And they would be able to escape all the responsibilities and all the duties as a father, as a husband. They found this easy way out and then they started indulging in homosexuality. Now, prior to them, no one had got involved in this practice. And this Im immoral practice was started by the people of Lut. So whoever, wherever, whenever commits homosexuality, its sin will also be transferred to the pioneers of the sinful act. And not only this, they were vulgar. They were vulgar enough to carry on their activities even publicly, even publicly in their social gatherings, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Shara, verse number 122, in Surah Al Qabut, verse number 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that nobody has indulged in it. And then Allah says, knowingly, seeingly, openly, publicly, you were committing all this. So now, Having them indulge in all these state of affairs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Hazratut alayhi salam to reform these people. The Prophet would invite them towards Allah and send them and teach them the messages of Allah, but they did not respond to his call. And in fact, they used to threat him that if he didn't stop all this, then they would turn him out of his community. Then as a trial, for the warned nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two angels. And these two angels were sent in the form of good-looking young men. 
these young men, they came to the house of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, which we've already read. And uh, then they came over to Hazrat Lut alayhi salam's house. And uh, Hazrat Lut alayhi salam there strictly, strictly told his wife not to let the people come to know about his guests and to keep it as a secret. But she was, she had not uh, believed in the teachings of Hazrat Lut alayhi salam and she was disobedient and she was transgressant and she was, she also <coughs> was not trustworthy. She betrayed the secrets of her husband. So she, in fact, was what? She was disobedient to Allah. She was disobedient to the Prophet. And she was disobedient to her husband also. And what she did was that um, either she went directly to the people and passed on the information and the news of the guests coming to the house of Ruth alayhi salam, or indirectly, she lit fire she lit fire so that when the smoke came out of the chimney, this would indicate, according to the norm of the people, that it indicated that they had guests. So, um, however, when the people of the colony they get they got to know about the arrival of the guests of the of the travelers, they came running for their desire. And Hazrat Salam, he stopped them and he begged them and he warned them to the extent that he even offered, offered them his daughters to marry for uh, to, to, to stay righteous. But as Allah says, they were blinded with desire. And then by the order of Allah, one of the angels extended his arm and um, turned the people who were wanting to commit the sin. He turned, the angel turned all of them blind. But despite that, we learned that despite that, they once even they were blind, they kept on moving their hands on the wall to search for the door so that they, they, they could break it open and enter and uh, fulfill their desires with the travelers. And then the angels conveyed Allah's order to Hazrat Salam that he accompanied with his two daughters and the companions who had believed should emigrate before the dawn, leaving behind his wife. And... Um, because um, these were the instructions which were given to Hazrat Lut alayhi salam. And, uh, and they were also given the instructions that they were not to look behind. And this was given because obviously when a believer um, leaves uh, all the blessings and sacrifices the blessings for the path of Allah and starts walking on the path of Allah, then there are no regrets. And then there's no looking back. And then there's no going back. So they were asked that you're not going to look back. And the second reason why they were asked not to look back was because obviously uh, punishment and torment was coming on the people of the community. And there are going to be their near and beloved, dear ones and their beloved ones. So Allah ask them not to look back because that might become a trial for them also. So uh, Prophet and his companions, they left and then the torment of Allah struck them. And the torment was uh, in one form, Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam came and he picked up the land and raised it high and then threw it on the ground from a height. So this part of the land, because of being thrown from a height, it got sunken and the sea developed here. And the sea is what it was. It is the Dead Sea. And then stones was uh, the stones were thrown. Stoning was done on the locality as there was a rain of stone. And the only remnant of the locality today is the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, about which we know that the salt concentration of the water of the Dead Sea is so very high that there is absolutely no form of marine life in the sea. And that is why it is known as the Dead Sea. No aquatic plants, no aquatic animals, totally lifeless sea, very much like the empty square land of the people of Ad. It announces the moral, and it is a, a reminder for the people of Luth. And uh, we do learn that the deep sea divers exploring the bed of Dead Sea, they report that they saw a huge graveyard indicating that uh, there must have been a population of thousands of people in the nearby cities. And uh, the lessons and the morals we learned 
Number one, the result and punishment of immorality and homosexuality. The curse of Allah befalls on the communities involved in homosexuality by disregarding this, all this, if we consider this is prevalent today in the schools, in the colleges, in the hostels of uh, the institutions, despite being a Muslim society. And uh, we need to realize that how big a sin it is and how it invites the wrath of Allah. Now going through the verses, and when our messengers the angels came to Luth. He was anguished. Why was he anguished and why was he upset? He was not upset seeing the guests. No, he was upset because he knew what his people will come up with. Anguished for them and felt for them great discomfort and said, this is a trying day. And his people came hastening to him. And before this, they had been doing evil deeds. He said, oh, my people, these are my daughters. They are purer for you. So fear Allah and do not disgrace me concerning my quest. Is there not among you a man of reason? They said, you have already known that we have not any concern in your daughters or any claim and indeed you know what we want he said if only i had against you some power or could take refuge in a so strong support the prophet was feeling what helpless the angel said O oh lord indeed we are messengers of lord therefore they will never they will never reach you so set out with your family during a portion of the night and let not anyone among you look back except your wife such a near relationship being the spouse of a prophet did not save her from the punishments or the torments of allah this is what Allah says in Quran. Indeed, she will be struck by that which strikes them. Indeed, their appointment is for the morning. It is not the morning near. So when our command came, we made the highest part of the city its lowest and rained upon them stones of layered hard clay, which were marked from your Lord. And Allah's punishment is not for from the wrongdoers very far. And to Madian, we sent their brother Shu'aib alayhi salam. So from now here onwards, for the next few verses, the story and the narration of Hazrat Shu'aib alayhi salam. He was the only prophet who was blind, but was with the, with the, uh, he had been blent or blessed with a very remarkable fluency of speech. He was known as the Khatibul Ambiya, the orator of prophets. His mother was the daughter of Hazrat Lut alayhi salam. And so he was what? He was the grandson of Hazrat Lut alayhi salam. The nation uh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been mentioned are two people, the people of Aka and the people of Madian. They were actually the descendants of the family of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, <coughs> from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, his wife, Qutura, there were two sons. One son, Madian bin Ibrahim, from him came the family of Bani Madian, and they settled in an area which extended from northern Hejaz to the south till the area of Palestine. And the capital of these people was Madian, so they came to be known as the people of Madian or Ehle Madian. The second son was Dawan bin Ibrahim, and the descendants from them were the Bani Dawam or the Dedanites. They settled in the northern areas of the Arab Peninsula. Tema and Tabuk were the areas, and the capital city was known as Eka. So they, with reference to the capital city, they came to be called as Ashabul Eka or the people of Eka. They were two separate nations, or they were two separate group of tribes. They, some people do say that they were just two names for one nation, but this is not correct. Since they were two separate areas, 
two separate areas, two different punishments have been mentioned for both in Quran. So they were the prophet was sent towards both the people. And why was he uh, just one prophet sent towards both the people? Because like for all facts and purposes, uh, they resembled each other, being the descendants of a Kamal family, having one familial origin, they had the same color, creed, language, their customs and traditions also resembled each other. And uh, the areas were also neighboring and uh, adjoining lands. Moreover, there were inter-tribal marriages also, and uh, their problems, their issues, they were also entirely similar. So because of all these similarities, just one pro, uh, prophet was chosen for their education and for their uh, reformation and for, in, for inviting them also. So the behavior of the people was what? They were blessed people. And uh, they were very prosperous in trade. And uh, not only were they prosperous in trade, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them a very suitable geographical location as well. Being traders by profession, they were very lucky to have been stationed on the highways or the prominent or the busy trade routes of the time. The true trade routes, one from Yemen to Syria and the second from the Persian Gulf to Syria. They uh, and the cities, their cities were located at the intersection of these two trade routes. So this was a remarkable opportunity and facility for them to expand their trade and business. But then instead of being grateful to the sustainer and staying content with what they were earning with their trade, they became greedy and they became selfish and they became lustful. And this was the last of the money again. That there's no doubt that the love of money in your heart is intense. So it is because of the evil lust of money that they, they deviated and they indulged in all forms of major sins. What they would do is that they started taking themselves as in charge and controller of the trade routes. And they taking themselves as the controller of the trade routes, they did what? Number one, they imposed heavy taxes on all the trade caravans. And the purpose was twofold. The purpose of imposing all these heavy taxes was number one, that they had the interest to increase, increase their revenues. And secondly, as a deterrent for the other trade caravans. So only that other trade caravans with these heavily imposed taxes would not travel. And so only their own tra uh, trade caravans would move freely and their trade would flourish only. So they were selfish and they were conceited and they were hard hearted and they were arrogant and they were oppressors also and they were wrongdoers also. And secondly, they would loot and they would plunder the trade caravans and they would do this to scare them off also, and also to acquire their belongings and wealth. So, and then thirdly, they would do another thing that they also resorted to unlawful means of earning in their trade dealings. They were earning so much from their trade, but still they were not content. They did not give mayors and vaid while their business transactions. So they were dishonest and they cheated people while they were trading and doing business. Prophet, so, uh, Prophet uh, Shoaib was sent. He invited them towards the truth and he advised them to stop dishonesty and their cheating and their looting and their all forms of dishonest dealings. And uh, uh, the Prophet warned them of the serious punishments of those indulging in such activities. But not only would they refuse to obey, but they also negated. As in Surah Araf, verse number 90, that the leaders and the elite, they all said, they warned their people that if you start obeying Shu'aib, then you will be, you will be unsuccessful and you will be among the losers. 
saying that that if you follow them you will not be successful <clears throat> they were like they 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 started believing like corruptors of all the periods that business and politics and trades and worldly affairs they could just not be successfully managed without being dishonest or without being cheatful and uh, finally the punishment which uh, was uh, ordered for the people was that for the people of madian they were punished with rajfa and aswaika that is an earthquake and an explosion and the punishment of people of aka was what that they these people of aka they had they had the audacity to ask for the torment from the sky so that is what they get so to start with the rains stopped and it became unbearably hot and suffocating and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent clouds in a nearby area and when they saw the clouds in the neighboring area they some of them went to see and to investigate about the weather and they found that the weather was cool and it was very pleasant and cool winds was blowing and there were chances of rain and they informed the people of aka of the of the wonderful weather there and they all emigrated to this area and when all of them had gathered then by the order of allah fire from the from the clouds from the dark black clouds which they were thinking were going to rain and the weather is going to improve even further instead of rain fire fell from the clouds and the fire burnt all the people to ashes with no remains even one of them left behind the message and the morals we learn the punishment of the unfair business dealings of the dishonest trade dealings of cheating of defaulting in weights and mires is what we learn how evil the lust of money and the desire of riches is we we learn all this and to madian we sent their brother shoaib he said o oh people o oh my people worship allah have you no deity you have no deity other than him and do not decrease from my years and scale indeed i see you in prosperity but indeed i fear for you the punishment of an all encompassing day and oh my people give full my years and weigh injustice and do not deprive the people of their due and do not commit abuse on the earth spreading corruption what remains lawful from allah is the best for you if you would be believers but i am not a guardian over you <clears throat> they said o shoaib does your prayer command you that we should leave what our fathers worship or not do with our wealth what we please indeed you are the forbearing the discerning he said o oh my people have you considered if i am upon clear evidence from my lord and he has provided me with a good provision from him and i do not intend to differ from you in that which i have forbidden you i will only intend to reform as much as i am able and my success is not but through allah upon him i him i have relied and to him i return and oh my people let not your dissension from me cause you to be struck by that similar to what struck the people of nu or the people of hud or the people of swale and the people of lut are not very far away from you and ask forgiveness of your lord and then repent to him indeed my lord is merciful and affectionate they said o oh, shoaib we do not understand much of what you say and indeed we consider you among us as weak and if not for your family we would have stoned you to death and you are not to us respected he said o oh, my people is my family more respected for power by you than allah but you put him behind your behind your backs in neglect indeed my lord is encompassing of what you do and oh my people work according to your position indeed i am working you are going to know to whom will come a punishment that will disgrace him and who is a liar so watch indeed i am with you a watcher awaiting the outcome
And when our command came, we saved Shoaib and those who believed with him by mercy from us. And the shriek seized those who had wronged, and they became within their homes, corpses fallen prone. And if, if they had never prospered therein, then away with Madian, as Thamud was taken away. We did certainly send Musa salam, with our signs and clear authority to Pharaoh and his establishment, but they followed the command of Pharaoh, and the command of Pharaoh was not at all discerning. He will precede his people on the day of resurrection. He who? Pharaoh. He will precede his people on the day of resurrection and lead them into fire. And wretched is the place to which they are led. And they were followed in this world with curse on the day of resurrection. And wretched is the gift which is given. That is from the news of the cities, which we relate to you of them. Some are still standing and some are as a harvest mowed down. And we did not wrong them, but they wronged themselves. And they were not availed at all by their gods, which they invoked other than Allah. When there came the command of your Lord, and they did not increase them in other than ruin. And thus is the Caesar of your Lord when he seizes the cities while they are committing wrong. Indeed, his Caesar is painful and punishment, is painful and severe. <clears throat> Indeed, in that is a sign for those who fear the punishments of hereafter. That is a day for which people will be collected and that day which will be witnessed. We do not delay it except for a limited term. The day it comes, no soul will speak except by his permission. And among them will be the wretched and the prosperous. And for those who were destined to be wretched, they will be in fire. For them therein is wild exhaling and inhaling. They will be abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure, except what your Lord should will. Indeed, your Lord is an effector of what he intends and as for those who were destined to be prosperous they will be in paradise abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure except what your lord should will a bestowal uninterrupted so do not be in doubt as to what these polytheists are worshiping they worship not except as their fathers worship before and indeed we will give them their share undiminished and we had certainly given Musa alayhi salam the scripture, but it came under disagreement. And if not for, for, the, for the word that proceeded from your Lord, it would have been judged between them. And indeed, they are concerning the Quran in disquieting doubt. And indeed, each of the believers and disbelievers, your Lord, with fully compensate them for their deeds. Indeed, he's acquainted with what they do. So remain on a right course as you have been commanded you and those who have turned back with you to Allah and do not transgress. Indeed, he is seeing of what you do and do not incline towards those who do wrong, lest you be touched by fire and you would not have other than Allah any protectors, then you would not be held and establish prayers at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Indeed, good deeds do, do, uh, do away with misdeeds. This is a reminder for those who remember and be patient for indeed Allah does not allow to be lost the reward of those who do good. So why were there, not among the generations before you, those of enduring discrimination, forbidding corruption on the earth, except a few of those who saved, those we saved from among them, but those who wronged, pursued what luxury they were given therein, they were criminals. And your Lord would not have destroyed the cities unjustly while the peoples were reformer. And if your Lord had willed, he could have made man mankind one community, but they will not cease to differ, except whom your Lord has given mercy, for that he created them. But the word of your Lord is to be fulfilled. 
I will surely fill hell with gin and men all together. And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. And there has come to you in this the truth and instruction and a reminder for the believers. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the purpose of relating and narrating all the stories and all the events also. And say to those who do not believe, work according to your position. Indeed, we are working and wait. Indeed, we are waiting. And to Allah belongs the unseen aspects of heaven and the earth. And to him will be returned the matter, all of it. So worship him and rely upon him. And your Lord is not unaware of that which you do. So after going through the events of the tormented people, you need to do what? Realize that all the creations belong to the creator, the master, the Lord. All the matters, the decisions, the issues will return to him. So we need to do what? We need to obey. We need to worship him. And we need to do what? We need to have reliance because he knows all we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with iman and bless us with obedience and humbleness and reliance and help us all establish salah. Help us protect us, guide us, bless us with your pleasure. Save us all from your curse and from your wrath and bless us all with your jannah and save us all from your torments and save us all from the hellfire. Now, before winding up, I will... I will want to stop and I will want to analyze after reciting and after reciting all these verses and after going through all the stories of all these five prophets. If you think and if you do self accountability, you will realize all of all of us, we will realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for all these communities and nations, he has mentioned one or two evil deeds or major sins for all the five nations. <clears throat> and then Allah has explained how because of those one or two or few evil deeds, they were punished. But if we realize and if we do a very strict accountability and self audit, we will see and we will realize that as a nation, as a society, or even as an ummah, we, the followers of Prophet Sallallahu are committing all the major sins which have been mentioned being committed by these five nations. We, the Muslim ummah, we are indulging in the evil deeds, the punished nations work collectively. We are doing all that collectively. So we need to continuously keep on doing our accountability at individual level, at collective levels. We need to confess. We need to regret over all the disobediences, all the transgressions we are doing with full arrogance. Continuously, we need to seek forgiveness, start reforming ourselves. And then we should make it a continuous routine and a habit to recite the Qunut in Azla, which has been taught to us by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma gfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Allahumma alif bayna qulubihim wa aslih zata baynihim wa ansurhum ala aduvika wa aduvihim. اللهم لعن القفرة الذين يصدون عن سبيلك ويقذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين قلمتهم وزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا تردوه عن القوم المجلمين الله سبحانه وتعالى help us all protect us all guide us all Bless us all with your pleasure and save us all from your wrath, from your curse, from the hellfire, from the torments of this world, from the punishments of this world. 
ربني لي عندك بيتا في الجنه اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم حاسبنا حسابا يسيرا ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك الرحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ثم امين